New Leaf podcast. It's been quite a while since I recorded an actual podcast since I went to Yarndale and the Nending Institute show in the past month. But this is the first actual podcast in a month, I think. Uh, or maybe a little bit more than a month. But anyway, my name is Carmen. You can find me on Instagram as newleafdesigns.nl and also on my website newleafdesigns.nl and I will list all of the other things either here or I think here. <laughs> I'm totally out of things. I have a lot to talk about today but I don't think I have a lot of time because uh, daylight is becoming scarce because it's the end of October and it's already a quarter to five. Yeah, but I have had a super jam-packed day and I've done a lot today, so I'm really happy about that, but I wish, I always wish I could do more. Yes, so I'm just gonna jump right in and I'm gonna start, start with a finished object, which are, and you will not have seen this because I have uh, started and finished it within the last month. So I started it at the end of September when I was going to Yarndale. And they're a pair of socks, perfect for traveling. And, <laughs> oh, I love how they look. Oh, I love them so much. So these are the Starry Night socks. Um, the the yarn does all the work basically so they are a pair of socks for my boyfriend who has gigantic feet i'm gonna see if i have just a moment so my boyfriend has gigantic feet it's european size 46 to 47 uh, and to compare it i'm gonna <laughs> so this is a pair of mine it actually doesn't look that drastic. Yeah, so I have 30, 36, or size 37, and my boyfriend has huge feet. So it took a long time to knit, but I had a lot of traveling to do, so that was fine with me. So I started this, uh, the first one, I started it when I went to Yarndale, and I really, I cast on on the bus going to the train i knit on it during the train ride which was two hours so i got a lot of knitting done and then by the first day i was already here i remember that um so bus train plane and then um can't remember. Oh, this I knit the second day. Uh, we had a lovely day. So before Yarndale, we first had the Bloggers Days from Scapius. So, so lovely. And um, if you haven't seen my vlog on that, you really have to see it because it's hilarious. <laughs> and um, it was just, just super lovely. And um, so we had the Scapius Bloggers Days first. I did this on the second day, so the second day of my trip, uh, but the first actual day we were there, and I think, I'm not sure if I finished it, no, I think I finished it after I came back, uh, it took about a week, I think, in total, yeah, but super, super fun to knit, and the yarn is by Studio Maze, and I think there is a label. Okay, so here is the label, Studio Maze, and uh, she's, um, it's by Caroline, who is a Belgian indie dyer. She comes from Hint in Belgium, and uh, this is her sock set. So the, uh, it came with a 100 gram skein and two mini skeins. So the minty one and the sand colored one. And this sock set is called Storm. 80% um, uh, blue face luster and 20% nylon. And oh, I just love it so much. And then the second one I cast on the day before I traveled to London 
for the knitting and stitching show and I didn't do that much on it during that trip because um, you know I, I had a different project with me as well so I was working a lot on that more about that one later and um, yeah and then halfway during the weekend I got really bad hand cramps so I didn't really do much crafting um, so I was about here and then in the last weekend we went on a family trip and I completed this in one day and then up until here so Friday Saturday and Sunday so that was really fun um, yeah so they, these were a breeze even though they are huge but yeah, really fun to knit. And I have some yarn left, so I can show you what it looks like in the ball. So this effect looks like this in the ball. So I think she just ties the skein in places. So I really tight so it doesn't die there. But um, yeah. It's just really really fun oh and um, I think so this was the first sock but on the second sock it kind of pooled you see this it's kind of so here is a starry night and here is a Milky Way <laughs> oh, I have too much imagination so the front of the sock looks like this yeah. so they were kind of pooling they were stacking on uh, the same spot over and over and usually I don't really like that but in this sock I think it's really cute so yeah I, I use the same amount of stitches but I think I, I um, either knit it tighter or looser so yeah so I'm calling these the my Starry Night socks, and I used my basic vanilla sock pattern. Um, so here on YouTube, I have some videos, uh, simple toe up socks uh, tutorial videos, and in those tutorials, I'm using a texture pattern on the leg and on the foot, but for this one, I just did plain sock knit knitting. So if you want to knit these socks, you can follow my tutorial and it will take you from toe to cuff. Alright, that was my first finished object. Now, I have, well, it's an almost finished project. Um, or as some would say, a mostly finished project, a MOFO. <laughs> I think it's so funny, M-O-F-O. -O. Um, yeah, so I am making some baby booties. And the only thing I have to do is get the laces right on this one and then do it on this one as well. That's the only thing I have left to do. Um, they are a Doc Martin style booties. Really cute. Um, I bought the pattern for this on Ravelry. I forgot the designer's name. I will put it in here. It's something like crochet style or crochet room something. Um, but I'll put it down here. So cute. And the baby who I am giving these to is already born. So I have to get a, get a move on. So I think she might even be one month old already. So, <laughs> yep. Last minute Carmen, always. Oh yeah, and I'm using some uh, acrylic yarn for this. They were just some old stash. I actually, I had given these to my mom and then when, when I had this idea, I thought, oh, I'm gonna have to ask for that yarn back so I can make this. <laughs> but the yellow is a Scapey's Cotton 8 because I really like cotton, gives a really crisp, um, effect so yeah I like those so and yeah, there's a little loop here 
really cute so I'm gonna finish those quickly and gift them alrighty I have another uh, sock related well it's a sock but you know I have a pair of socks pair of booties and now another thing to put on your feet um, this one is still a work in progress and they will be socks for me oh and I just love these um, these are my third pair of striped and stranded socks and coincidentally so the stripes are in the scrum and the original version of the striped and stranded socks are these which I just showed you and the pattern is in my Ravelry store so be sure to take a look if you like it and um, I'm using so the idea is I'm using self striping yarn and a contrast yarn um, and it's just really fun. So this one, I'm using the same color work pattern over and over. Whereas for the first one, I used uh, lots of different patterns, uh, charts, patterns. So it looks kind of wonky, uh, but you know, color work socks always look a bit wonky before you block them. And I'm knitting these on DPNs, which is not my usual method, so maybe that has to do with it as well. But I'm knitting them on DPNs because I, I took them with me in the plane. And m my chow goose got in, no problem. But um, yeah, I just didn't know that beforehand. So I had one sock project with chow goose and one on wooden DPNs. Um, yeah so take a look at the chart the exact same chart is not in the pattern but um this one is and this one so um i believe well, i can just show you on this one can't i uh yeah there it is so take a look at the top one here i've just elongated that one to make this color pattern see and i've added a little stitch in there so if you have the pattern, you can recreate this pattern as well. And I'm using a self-striping yarn by Regia. And this is the Regia Perfect. And it has really, really broad stripes. I think it's about 12 or 13 rounds. So that's really good. Um, and the contrast colorway that I'm using is Scapius R Tribe in a really dark blue colorway. I believe it's Iris Garden. Might be wrong, but really, really dark blue. Um, and the needles are Knit Pro Royal, I think, Knit Pro Royal 2.5 millimeter. Um, yeah. The heel always looks so slumpy, so baggy on color work. <laughs> socks but I do I, I did go down a needle size for the heel I always do that for the heel and for the toe ah the toe is uh Scapies Invicta I think yeah I think so Scapies Invicta and then Scapies R Tribe yeah so that's really fun um I I am a little bit worried about the color work pattern being so um, I don't know it just looks wonkier than I usually knit but I don't know I'll just finish it and block it and see how it turns out but I'm really really liking the white stripes on this although sometimes it was hard to see because from this to this one there's not much difference in there and um, if I'm knitting this at night with bad lighting, <laughs> then um, I don't know if I'm at the new color already. Same happened with this. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, really enjoying this. Um, 
not much else to say really so just gonna put it back in my DPN cozy which I got from craftfulness who is a indie dyer from Friesland from the northern part of the Netherlands then another work in progress this one is also with escape use our tribe yarn but then in a variegated colorway and this colorway is designed by Matt from A Boy and Bunting. I went to the knitting and stitching show with Matt uh, two weeks ago and uh, his colorway had just come out and I had not seen it in person yet and they had it at the fair uh, so we were there um, in the VIP lounge which was sponsored by Escape Use and we had a uh, um, lots of yarn tasting so um, there were a lot of tables and every table would have a bucket with a different yarn in it and a crochet hook or knitting needles and so people could try out the yarn and they had brought the our tribe the new one as well so I snacked that one for myself <laughs> They only had one ball and I had never worked with it before and yeah, I just, I just had to make something because it's so, so pretty. So, uh, I don't know if you remember my timber cowl that I made with my own uh, colorway of the um, Our Tribe yarn series. Um, my colorway is called New Leaf um, and I made a timber cowl and I am doing the same pattern but then in Matt's colorway, and I just love his colors. I love it. So there's a lot of blue and purple and pink as well. Um, yeah. yeah, I just love it. Um, if you know Miss Nerissa's colorway, uh, this is actually very similar, but darker. So Miss Nerissa's colorway is also uh, blues and pinks and purples but more pastel-y and this one is more dark and I really like it um, yeah and from from this from the first version of my timber cowl I remember that the cast on edge well the chain uh, the cast on chain was really tight so when I put it on I remember it you know not sitting quite right so I did it really loose on purpose here but it kind of looks too loose now but I'll just block it and see what happens and if I wear it you'll probably won't even see it because it will be um, there will be a lot of fabric covering it so and I plan to make this one really, really long. So that will be fun. I'm using a three millimeter crochet hook uh, from Tulip. Uh, so this one, it matches. So this was one of the souvenirs of the Knitting and Stitching Show. And here's another one of my souvenirs. It's a Progress Keeper. It's a little double-decker bus. Isn't that cute? And I'm not sure if you can see, but the windows are open. Yeah, they're actual little holes. I thought that was so cute. Yeah, so I put this one on my socks. Um, but yeah, now they're finished, so I can choose a different project to put these on. Okay, but before I show you the rest of the souvenirs, I'm going to show you my last work in progress. So, can you guess what it is? So, for those of you who don't know, I have a pattern which is called the Rainbow Blanket. And it is... Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> Is that strange to say about your own pattern? So I'm really, really liking this pattern. Um, it's a blanket with a lot of colors. 
and it's in chevrons and I made uh, one entire blanket already um, and I will definitely put a picture up here um, and the pattern is on my blog for free and we're doing a crochet along at the moment this is a rainbow cow um, and it's running until February the 1st um, I think so and for the cow I am crocheting the XL version which is made with the Scapius stone wash and river washed XL so that's the iron weight version and it is huge already <laughs> yay I love 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 these colors they are totally out of my comfort zone because there's a lot of orange and red and I usually don't go for those colors, but I just really like it. Um, and there are some beautiful blankets already um, in the hashtag. Um, that I've seen on Instagram and also in the Ravelry group we have a thread for this uh, crochet along and a lot of people are joining in which is super fun and um, yeah and everybody says they're enjoying it so much um, and you know I really have to say this is one of the most enjoyable things I've ever made because it is mindless but still very entertaining at the same time because you get to use a new color every second row uh, so every second row you see there is a kind of rainbow going on from here to here to here 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 and then in between we have bigger chunks of one color so, and for the original version, which is the regular Scapey Stone Washed and River Washed, you have five rows of one same color, but in the Excel version, it's three. So one, two, three, and then the next color, one, two, three. See? Sometimes it's hard to see because I pick them out in a kind of gradient as well. So from dark purple to dark pink to a kind of brownish purple to red and then there's also red and then an orange and another orange and a salmon pink and now a yellow. Yeah, so super, super fun. And I just can't stop. And I have... Um, I have a good tip for you, but I can't really show you properly. Okay, yes I can. So uh, there is a specific color sequence for the smaller um, balls that you only use for one row, which are these. And the, um, these are 15 gram balls from the Scapius Stone Wash and River Wash Color Pack XL. And um, so there's a specific color sequence and instead of numbering the um, yarn tags, I put them on a string and I just use the one that is on top. Um, so it's, you know, this one is only three, but I prepared, I was super ambitious. I thought I was going to finish uh, a whole lot more. So I had prepared a second string of uh, balls and I took this with me um, when I travel to London so this is the color sequence starting from here or at least what I still have to do so yay that's my piece of advice and you know if you don't use it you can have it as a pretty necklace as well <laughs> Anyway, so I'm really, really enjoying my Rainbow blanket and I was working on it during the um, craft fair. I think I crocheted from here all the way 
to where I am now. That's quite a big chunk, so I'm really happy with that. Um, yeah, and I actually, I cannot wait until this one is finished, but I also don't want it to end at the same time. You know that feeling? Yeah. Okay, so that was my ship rainbow whip my last whip i'm going to be talking about today and if you're interested in the crochet along and if you haven't joined yet be sure to check it out there's plenty of time some some people have already finished their blankets and it started october 1st so just saying it's a really quick blanket someone is actually making three blankets yeah so check out my blog post, check out what you need, and um, see if you want to join or not. So I still have some exciting news to share. The first news is, of course, the new Scapius Yarn Bookazine is out. I'll put the front cover right here. It's the sixth issue called Folk, and it's filled with beautiful, beautiful patterns. I think there are about 17 patterns in there and uh, four of them are knitting patterns and the rest is crochet um we crochet a lot here in the netherlands so yeah lots of crochet and they're really affordable patterns as well um yeah so i, I can't name a price off the top of my head because you know i um forgot but um super affordable projects to do um i'm gonna be making a cardigan super cute and totally my style i put a picture up here uh, by susan walsh um beautiful cardigan yeah and i have two designs in there as well one is the sleeping reindeer soft toy who you can see here and uh, so cute and I, I love design am amigurumi but I don't do it that often anymore I really should do it more often and it was so fun uh, and my testers loved it as well and they picked the just prettiest colors for their reindeers and it was so cute um, and I added a little um, ribbon around um, the chest and so cute and the second one is um, a pair of socks called the winterberry socks and they're made with two balls of scapies art tribe um, and because of the variegated yarn and color work it just looks very very sophisticated and you know it's just oh, it's so beautiful and the photography I just love I can't get over the photography so beautiful so I'm really excited to get my hands on a copy I think it should be arriving tomorrow uh, I was kind of bummed it couldn't be here today so I could show you but I'll be sure to show you on the next podcast um, yeah so I'm really excited about that it's always nice to see your designs and print um, yeah, it's just, you know, self-published patterns are really, really nice, but, you know, in in a book, in print, it's just, <sighs> it's just a really, really nice feeling. Um, and my patrons will know that I'm working on a new design at the moment as well, and I've given them a little sneak peek. It will be my first design of the new year. Um, so yes, I'm already working for spring 2019. <laughs> um, yeah, sometimes the design world can be a little crazy, but yeah, if you'd like more sneak peeks and more stories about the designing process and my thoughts and everything and, um, you know, just hop on over to my Patreon page. And for only $2 a month, you can get access to the um, exclusive sneak peeks. And for $5 a month, you can get exclusive um, video content. So the tutorials I have been preparing for my patrons will all be up on there. Um, and loads more, but I'm not going to get into that right now. I think I'm going to show you my souvenirs. From the knitting and stitching show so the Yarndale souvenirs um, I talked about those in the Yarndale blog 
but the knitting and stitching show souvenirs um well you know i didn't buy that many so i thought i could just um show it in the regular podcast so i bought two skeins of yarn oh i bought this bag as well let me show you the bag first it's so cute there are cats in sweaters or scarves with umbrellas aren't they cute I just I just had to have it um, and it was for a cat charity so yay okay so I got two skeins of yarn at the knitting and stitching show um, one is Ching Fiber, her Shangri-La um, series, and this particular colorway is called, oh, let me see, Datura, I think, Datura, oh, I might be reading that wrong, or Datua, I think it's Datura, so, oh, so pretty, I mean, look at those colors it's so pretty so i love this peacock green i don't even know if it's peacock green emerald green and then there is mustard in there and some hot pink and purples as well it's just this colorway has so many different colors in there but i love it and i don't even think it's too overwhelming i think it will work especially with this uh second skein because this one has very subdued colors um well more subdued than this one so i got some olan or actually, what was it called? Olon? Olon? I, th I know that it's the Irish word for yarn. Um, and when they pronounced it in Irish, it sounded a lot like, um, like Lana or Len. Like, I could hear that, okay, it's it's you know len is uh, wool in french and lana is wool in um italian um yeah so i could hear that it was um part of that um language family so yeah so uh, and this colorway is called anarchy which is super fun um i bought these at the loveliest yarn co in um uh, at the knitting and stitching show and oh, i just love this and this is more um similar to the yarns i usually buy pinks <laughs> but there is some brown in there as well and i do you think it will it will go i think it will i think it will Because they both have green and they both have uh, pink and they both have brown mustard so I think it will work and both have white so yeah I'm going for a fade shawl but I'm not sure which pattern yet so maybe the dotted rays probably the dotted rays but yeah thinking about that and then i got some to needle felt with and i'm being really careful but it crinkles a lot um it's annie brown hand dyed wool from their own sheep isn't that cute and there is some like some netting in there as well yeah really cute so yeah maybe i can also use it for spinning i probably can since i don't really felt that much yeah 
so that was cute. Those were my souvenirs from the Knitting and Stitching Show. I have one more thing to talk about, and I think I'm just in time because it's really starting to go dark here. Um, so I, um, I have a giveaway coming up on my Patreon page. Um, I will do a quarterly giveaway. So once every three months and I started my Patreon page in August. So August, September, October, that means uh, we are three months. My Patreon page is three months old now. So that means I get to do a giveaway. And previously I had the giveaway listed as a benefit for uh, patrons, but since patrons you know, pay for their subscription and a giveaway, you know, is a chance to win something. So they would pay to maybe win something and that's gambling. So, yeah. So I had to uh, come up with something else. So what I came up with is that I will just do the giveaway public on the Patreon page. So you don't need to be a patron to see it or to participate, um, but all patrons will, of course, receive a notification from the giveaway, so it will be easier for them. Uh, yeah, so I have collected some goodies over the past uh, months, and the patrons will already have seen this, but gonna show you as well so I might still add to this I will probably still add to this but this is what I have so far so I have a little notions pouch a little well it's a little coin purse actually from Hema which is my favorite Dutch store and has a lobster on it and a lightning strike thing so yeah, amazing. And the back is white, but the front is see-through. So I was thinking you can put stitch markers in here and you can very easily see which um, stitch markers or progress keepers you still have in here. So I think that will be uh, handy. And at Hey Mile also got a Stropafel face mask. And a stroopwafel is a uh, traditional Dutch treat, which is a syrup waffle. Um, uh, yeah, and they now have a face mask with stroopwafel scent. <laughs> so I thought it was so funny. And I think, yeah, it also, it warms up. And I love those. I love face masks that warm up. Uh, so one of those. Um, I have a yarn cutter. Um, I have one of these already and it's a lifesaver when you're traveling a lot, uh, when you're on the plane. You cannot take scissors, but you can take these. So that's really cool. And I have a yarn after party in there, which is a pattern for a crochet blanket. And it uses cables. This pattern is by Allie Campbell. Uh, yeah, it's a really pretty blanket. So I'm just including that in there. And the um, Double Decker Bus Progress Keeper I showed you earlier. I also got one of those for you guys. Um, yay, really cute. And then the major prize is a skein of yarn from Walnut Verve, who is a Dutch indie dyer. Um, I got the skein last year, I think, on a craft fair, and I just, I just realized it's not really my color, and um, I thought to make someone else happy with it instead. So the colorway name is Violetta, and it's on a sock base, 75% superwash virgin wool and 25% nylon. And it has this kind of electric yellow in there, uh, lots of purple, obviously some orange and also some dark blue speckles. Yeah, it's, it's really pretty, but I don't think it would suit me. I just, 
yeah so I thought to give it away yeah and so that that is what I have so far but I will probably still add some goodies to the mix yeah so I will open the giveaway um, I think well, I actually think today because I want to have it running for a couple of days and I will close it somewhere in November. But just please go and have a look at the Patreon page and you can find the giveaway post and how to enter and uh, yeah, uh, all the information will be on there. All right, that was it for me for this podcast episode. I hope you liked this episode. And if you did, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the podcast, or leave a comment. It really helps other people to find the podcast. Um, and a huge thank you to my patrons for supporting the channel. Um, if, you're, if you're thinking about supporting the channel as well, please have a look at my Patreon page. Um, it's a small monthly subscription. You know, you can choose between two dollars a month, or you know, five, eight, and ten dollars a month. So, and all tiers come with different benefits. So, yeah, there's a lot of extra content to unlock. So, if you if you would like that, then please go and have a look. And if you'd like to support the podcast in other ways, um, you know. You can like and subscribe, as I said, comment, share it on Instagram, uh, or, you know, even by watching the commercials, um, watching them to the end, it really helps the podcast. Um, you don't even have to do anything. Just watch the commercial. <laughs> okay, I'm being obnoxious now, I know. Okay, so thank you so much for watching. Thank you for all of your support. And... <laughs>